Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again. Well, I've got absolutely no idea if you can see this, but I'm about to solder one of these uh, one mil by half mil stanchions. Um, hopefully, you'll catch this. I just wanted to show you exactly how fiddly this is. But I need something to hold that stanchion in place while I drop the solder on, so hopefully it's not going to move. Take some of this off, got a bit too much on. Okay, that's enough. So, hopefully once that sets, it's just a matter of filing that extra solder off to get the look that we need. So let's get that out. I don't know if you can... We've got too much on there. That's moved, hasn't it? It has. It's moved. Let's try again. Where were we? Little hole somewhere. There she is. Let's try again with this because... Uh, not quite happy with that. It had actually moved too far across. Oh. What I need to do is just gently As you can see, this is so fiddly. Let me get my little rocker back on. Get some of this solder off. Too much solder on it. There we go. So that's that. Next time you see it, it will be all tidied up. So it doesn't always, always go to plan when you're doing these little tiny bits. You know, one of the worst things about this pandemic is everything seems to have gone up in price. I mean, before when you can get, you could get like a two metre length of one mil brass rod for a couple of quid. If that, now it's like four quid, five quid. Just uh, absolutely ridiculous. And then when you want to get it sent to your house, there's a delivery charge on top. Just nuts. So, me, I can't wait for this thing to be over. Not just because of that, but obviously the destruction to countries' e economies and things like that. What I'm doing right now is uh, making some hoops. Um... Let me show you what we did yesterday. If I can bring it round and get it in focus. All right, can we see that? Is that in there? There we go. Right, so if you see the uh, middle section here, there's little hoops on there. So I need to make, obviously, uh, the last time we left this, I'd only done one set of railings. We've got both in now. Um, obviously, every time I make another one, I make slight adjustments to it as I discover new ways to do things. Um, this side is better than that side and the hoops are better. It's a little bit more finished. Um, I will get around to polishing it up and tidying up bits and bobs where there's a little bit too much solder. But I've also made... Is that in picture? There we go. I've made the first of the corner ones. These are quite difficult. This is, there's, a, there's like a 120 degree angle there for the little supports and i've tried to keep the original supports by drilling through the middle and then just attaching 
the brass rod through it and into the deck. Um, I've got one more to replace on this side. Um, we'll be making that today uh, and I'll show you how we did it. I tried to do it yesterday. <laughs> I started filming and as per usual, me being the crappiest cameraman in the world, um, it didn't come out properly. So we'll do one today. Where's my little bit of metal gone? Oh, all that is, is the one mil brass rod and I've just whacked it out with a hammer to flatten it a bit. I mean, obviously, if times were better and I had a bit more money, I could just buy the uh, metal sheet and, and cut bits off it. But it is what it is. I, I probably would have just bashed it out anyway. So we've got that more or less there. I'll drill the holes first. Are we, are we on here? Let me just bring this around a bit. Come to pop up. So are we there? There we go. So we've got the uh, needle drill. It doesn't matter where I drill it because I can always grind it down to the exact point. Now, what size is that? Yeah, we're half a mil. So, get in position. And start the drill. <laughs> Usually I would have put this in my Bosch hammer drill. Well, you know, normal battery drill. <laughs> and gone, gone at it. But I knew I would have got comments why you using such a big drill to do such a tiny hole. So we'll do it by hand. It's not, not a worry. It takes a little while to go through. But uh, carefully, carefully, when you're doing stuff this small, I mean, the obvious way around this would be to make little rings that have really thin wire, but I haven't got any really, really thin wire. So this for me is the safest way to do it. I need to leave enough of a gap in the middle for the actual stanchion to solder to. And also for me to get it bent around the, sol the uh, stanchion. Are we in the middle there? Yeah, I think so. So we'll look at that. Get the second one done. I'm trying to get my hand out of the way so you can see what's going on. So it's just a matter of turn, 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 turn until she goes through. And then I'll show you the grind off method. And then we'll measure out a bit of wire. That's the correct length for the stanchion. Hopefully in this episode as well, uh, we'll get to do some more spray painting. Well, not spray painting, a bit of weathering. Um, so that's good. So all I need to do now is get some grinding done. Twist it off when we're almost all the way through. Because if I grinded it all the way through, this would have flicked off and I would never have found it again. You know what it's like. You drop something little onto the floor and where's where's it gone? The little people that live under the floor have nicked it. Um, 
Okay, so I need to just file the tiny flat bit in the middle of there just to give me a guide. guide for the stanchion. I think if I'm lucky I've got a small piece of wire that I can use right there to measure out. So let me get on the bits out of the way. Let's be right there. The wire work obviously is uh, made a lot easier by having this book to hold the wire down. There we go. That's the correct size. Next up, I need to just grind off. Flat bit. I don't know if you can see that. But well, that's taking the stanchion down to half its diameter so that our little bit can fit on. Now, what we've done is put it down. What did I tell you? I put the damn thing down and now I can't see where I put it. But luckily, I've got it on film. So if I need to, I can look back and see where I put it. <laughs> oh dear, I love it when the plan doesn't come together as well as it did when it does. Where are you? When did I put you? Oh, come on. There you are. Right. Okay, bring you back. You on there. I'm hoping this is in, in focus. So what I need to do is get you a what is fluxy. Okay, we're just going to put the flux on. This doesn't have to be exact right now because obviously once I've got it uh, soldered on, I can just file it down. But what is important is that I get it bang on in the middle. So, that'll do. Let's get the soldering iron on. Should have done that earlier. Get some gas in it. There we are. Okay, soldering iron's on. Give it a couple of seconds to heat up. If you hear me sniffling, got a bit of a cold right now, so uh, <laughs> just forgive it. As I mentioned uh, earlier on, as I've been making these um, stanchions, as you do, as you go along and you make more of them, you discover new ways of doing things or better way of doing things. Like version version one, the hoops were all over the place. So what I did was I just completely remade them with, with new, stronger hoops uh, on the end. I don't know if you can see the hoops on that one. But either way, I've got a spare railing that I can use for something else now. 
I'm also not happy with the uh, lower stanchions that I bought off Amazon because they're a completely different style to what is actually on the S100. So basically, I'm going to scrap scrap them and uh, make my own. Why not? It's not rocket science. And if Pat's watching, I'm not breathing in these um, fumes. I've got myself a little fan to the side and it's it's blowing it away from me. But thanks for the warning on that. I didn't realise that uh, flux was um, toxic. The gases off it are toxic. You learn something new every day. The day you stop learning, time to give up. I think I want a little bit of... Okay, need to hold it in place with something. Let's get this done. I think I've got enough solder on. It's moved, but it might still be in the... No, this isn't working. Come on. Right, I know what I need to do. I know what I need to do. Let's get you off of there for a start off. You see, I did it on the first one. I pinned it down. So, why I didn't pin it down that time, I have no idea. So, let's get you pinned down. I need to refine the hole. Let's find the hole. Because I put too much solder on, I've uh, filled in the hole, so I need to make the hole again and then pin this down so that what just happened doesn't happen again. I don't want it moving. Right. What do I do with it? There she is. All I've got to do is pin this down. <laughs> There we go. And this time I'll do it from the back because then I can hold this down. Get it in the middle. I think we are. Just need to adjust it a little bit. Right, that looks about square. And if it's not, just do it again. Got a funny feeling gonna be doing a lot of stuff again today. And that looks like it's on. Let's have a look. we got a good solder. Let me get my drill through and make sure it's in the middle. I'm trying to make sure this is all in camera for you so you see what we're doing. Again, using these half mil bits. Perfect. So, now I've got that done. All I need to do is grind it off a little bit. The next bit is the filing. So just to make it look a little bit more round like a hoop, that's all. I mean, the originals were a steel bar on the original ship, just made into a hoop. So what I've got to do is get this so it's looking a bit more hoop-like. 
double hoop like. So I don't know if the, is this in camera. There we go. As you can see, we're coming together there. It's going to move down a little bit. Keep it in camera, Potter. There we go. Get you rounded. I don't know. Try and keep it in. So we've got that top bit done. It's a bit more rounded. I'm going to move into the underside now. Get that rounded. Using just standard cheap old needle files for this. They call them jewellers needle files on online, but they're not jewellers ones by any shape or means. The ones that cost you a few quid in a pack, they're far too rough to be jewellers, I've got to tell you. Getting close to these, you can see you can see the file marks on a jewellers one, you can't. It's really smooth. So, now we've got the hoops more or less done. I just need to smooth them round a little bit. I mean, the actual finish on these will be done with a, a miniature flapper wheel. Um, just to get, give them a little bit of polish and so that the, the, the groove lines don't uh, show up too badly. Now let's work the other side. The original stanchions were welded, of course. So you would have little tiny weld marks on these. So this all fits in well, because once you've filed it, it gives it a kind of a weldy look anyway. I mean, you car guys that have come across from, from Chad's, you'll know that uh, this is a kind of leading, to be honest. Um, the solder, although it doesn't contain any lead, uh, you can still spread it around and give a smooth surface or, or give a texture once you've heated it up. I think you will have seen that when I made the copper boxes before, how it spreads so easily across copper. But obviously you, you can't use this solder on steel, it just won't stick. And that's because it's got no lead in it. Okay, now just a little bit more filing off of here and then I can bend these to the correct angle. In fact, no, what I'll do is I'll put you there and we can have our next, um, next double hoop line. So what I'm do, going to do here is cut a groove. Oh, sorry, file down a groove so that our next double hoop that we make will fit into it and get a good amount of surface area for the solder to grip. Because what I'm going to have to do is bend these round to 120 degree angle. And if the solder joint is weak, it will just break off. I haven't had it happen yet, but there's still time today for that to happen. So let us make our second double hoop. So this is the second of the double hoops that I'm making now. The holes on this one will be slightly wider because it's literally got to wrap around the stanchion. So Obviously, you lose a little bit of length when you wrap around the, the uh, brass stanchion. 
and I've made this a little bit thinner as well so that it bends easier around the stanchion. Okay, I need to leave enough to bend round, that should be enough. That's a little bit too much, is that? Let's get a marker. Let's get a marker. One of the good things about when you're uh, drilling so small as well, you don't need to punch a centre hole to get it. You can just rest it on and away you go. That goes for copper, brass, any of the softer metals. Not tried it with steel yet, but uh, one day maybe. One of my future hopeful projects would be to build one of the RC tanks from scratch out of real steel um, but that would mean buying all the CNC equipment or whatever don't know we'll see So we grind it roughly into shape. Hoping that it doesn't ping off into nowhere land. as far as it can and this will just twist off there we go so next up where's the stanchion there we have it so right i need to uh I need to grind this down a little bit more so this will fit. That's far too thin. So I've ground that three quarters of the way round. So this stanchion can be bent round it. Now what I need to do is get something to bend this across. So I am going to, is that in camera? There, okay. Put it there. I'm going to try and file little groove down the middle and then put it across this grip it firmly with the fingernail the mucky fingernail my head and bend. There we have roughly 120 degrees. So I'm happy about that. Okay. So there. Let's get some flux on. Come on, Mr. Flux. This is the most fiddly bit 
without a doubt that I have done on this model so far. This is just this is this is take about 150 of this by the way. So I'm hoping you're enjoying my agony. Right, that's not in properly. I need to grind that a little bit more. There might just be another take after this. <laughs> ah! Anyone want to tell me why I started a YouTube channel? <laughs> okay, come on. This time. This time, Mr. Potter. Let's get it in there. rock and roll solder I hope to crikey this is in if this isn't in camera that's it I'm going to give it in for the day go to bed oh you come on there we go All done. Soldering it off. Let's get this filed. As you can see, we are on. We've got a little bit of an angle going on, which is great. We've got to bend the top one into the same angle. And then everything will be, what's the word? Tickety-boo. Do you know, I was just thinking the other day about, because most of the stuff that I do is about World War II and things that went on in World War II. Can't help thinking, you know, World War One, World War II, wars all over the world. Humans seem to be drawn like flies to a candle. Wrong saying, moths to a candle. Filed out. Keep it in camera as much as you can. Oh, my battery's low. Sorry about that. I had to try, give the uh, phone a little bit of a charge. So right now, all I'm doing is filing off into a nice hoop what we've just soldered on. So.
I just realised something as well. While I've been filing, I've knocked the head off. So I'll have to get that soldered back on. As I say, this is this is very fine stuff. And if you don't get a good soldered joint, it's just as easy to knock the brass bits off that you're soldering as it is to knock a bit of plastic that's been glued on. So this one right there, I'm leaving that as it is. And then we'll get this uh, head part glued back on. Sorry, soldered back on. So where she came from. So get you just there. Are we upside down. No. Let's get the soldering iron back on. Okay, let's get this soldered back on. Soldering hands up to heat. Gwass is on. Hold her down. There we go. That should have her back on. Let's have a look. Yep. So... Next up is to bend these. After I've ground her off a little bit. Let's get this filed. Right. We have to now bend this a little bit around to give us that one twenty. go that'll do ah. son of a bend back please and there we have it you can see that let's try and get it right in the camera see if it picks it up So that is that. Next up is soldering iron off. See if I can lift this over. And we will be replacing this one right here. So I need my cutter. A little blade. Hopefully sharp enough. I have to cut this one off. And keep the leg supports, hopefully. No, I need a better knife. Um, knives. in there obviously got to be very careful not to uh, slash my fingers in fact no what I want is for that to be off roughly there ah now that's exactly what I didn't want to happen so, I guess what I'll do is grind her off. Right. That won't work. 
Um, let's see, if I'd have had some side cutters, this would have been so much easier. That's that one off. Now, let's see if I can cut you off there. Yes. I made a slight gash in that, but I can repair that. So, I want you off. So, let's get you off. Cut you off just there. Perfect. So I'm going to keep the old stanchions, obviously. I might better use them for something else on a on another model. So that's all good. Right, I need my one mil bit, which I have here. So let's get you drilled. So our new bit should fit. Nicely into there. Okay, that's through the correct angle, obviously. Oh, good. So a little drop of glue and it's somewhere. Which one are we going to use? We will use the thick super glue on this one. Or cyano, however one you call it. If there was absolutely no gap and it fitted perfectly, I would use the thin cyano, but I'm not too sure what kind of, how tight, well, it feels tight, but better safe than sorry. Little tiny drop on there. Where's my cloth? Get the stanchion in. right height which is just above there so let's have a look at the lining up just a little bit further out gotta be careful here because the glue's about to set that my friends will do Get it straight. Let's get it straight. I'll put another drop on just for good luck. Oopsie. Another drop on just for good luck. Also put this stanchion on. Get a little bit of super well in this corner. There we go. A little bit down the bottom there because I managed to bend that and we have a stanchion here which I'm going to reattach glue's dried up so let's put you on
This is proving to be a little bit more difficult than what I anticipated. Okay, that appears to be on. I've got to straighten out that plastic leg, obviously, because that's managed to bend. Um, but other than that, I am mighty, mighty pleased with uh, today's progress. We've got the corner ones on, just ready to be roped up. I'm going to take all these ones I got off Amazon off because they're completely the wrong shape for the rest of the boat. Uh, and as you can see, the railings that we've put on, um, well, they're, they're a clo as close as damn it to the original railings, as you can see there. And the main point of doing this is so that they don't, I'm not worried about things breaking off when, I, when we go to run this on the pond. Um, in a previous episode, I did show you the motors and the prop shafts that we scratch built um, for this particular build. Um, so it's definitely going to be a pond runner. Its speed is going to be epic, I, I I reckon, with having the three propellers on it. Other builds I've seen on YouTube just use two props. Um, I want this to be as close to the original as, as possible uh, and run the proper three three propellers. Why not? Let's see how fast this thing can go. And obviously we're planning something a little bit special uh, with a reworking of... Um, an old story. Uh, I can't, I'm not. I'm not going to say any more. I'd be mental to say any more. But come the end of April, um, we're going to have something pretty spectacular for you. Um, I'm. I'm. I'm planning on end of April being the finish of this build, uh, and we'll take it out for a pond. And the maiden voyage hopefully will be spectacular. So that's it for today. Sorry, it doesn't seem like we've got much done, but. I've got to tell you, these railings took absolutely ages to make. Through trial and error, some turned out wrong. Some, to, man, the amount of bits that pinged off and have gone to the floor goblins is uh, is is amazing. Um, I think I, th I think they're building their own ship down underneath the, underneath the floorboards. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, have a great uh, weekend, guys, um, and we'll see you next Sunday. Also in the move from the uh, loft to the shed, uh, we managed to break up. I don't see the winding handle. There's a winding handle there. Um, I'm guessing it, it wound the doors open for the torpedo tubes on the actual boat. There's the torpedo tube there. So I'm guessing it either opened the door or did some kind of, I don't know, maybe it's closed the back door on the uh, torpedo tubes. So... What I need to do is, because I broke that one off there, I need to remake that in brass because that's another thing that will probably break with taking the, the deck off. Um, so that's what we're going to do right now. So first of all, I need to uh, cut the handle off. Which will be no mean feat, I can tell you. Here we go. I'm beginning to regret spray painting the deck now because uh, I did it a long time ago and I should have thought beforehand of all the things that I were going to do to this um, and then spray paint once it's finished. So that's off of there. Cut the centre out gently as I can. Cut this one off as well. So that's that gone. That's that gone. So I need to measure how 
the gap on those for the full length so we're talking about one and a half mil so i need to add three mil to the length of the winding arm that i'm going to be doing so that's that that's that where did the other bit go to be upside down it's not there where did it go What did I say earlier about things pinging off? Um, but that doesn't matter because I've still got I've still got the other one, which is there, so I can just measure that. So I'll get the other ruler out, which is a bit more exact. So I want to be six point three. Six point three from the end of the arm right so let's get some bending done so we've got 6.3 nice i mean i could use snippers on when i'm when i'm cutting these but I find the grinder gives just a much more square finish to it and, and, and leaves you in a, a good position. So there we have it. I need to do some solder now. So let's get the correct length on this. do so i need solder nice big blobs of it on each joint so uh soldering iron on gas on just realized that most of that was off camera so let's get it on camera so you can see what i'm doing So I've made the winding handle for the torpedo tubes. So we're going to add some solder to each of the joints to match the joints on the original handle. And I'll just file them off and make them look proper. So we've got the soldering iron going. Let me get some solder on. Dip this in the uh, goop. It's a little bit too much. Uh, <laughs> a little bit too too much of the gunk on there. But hey, at least it'll make my solder stick. Big blob. Nice big blob. And I want a huge blob on the end. Nope. It's not where I want it. You might be right. Okay, we'll have to work this. OK. 
Okay, let's see how we go with that. I can always add more if I haven't got enough on. So, grindy, grindy time. Out, out. Right. I'm going to use the needle files on this because I think um, the grinder might be just a little bit too violent. Come on, Mr. Handel. I need it much more of a blob on the tip, you see. Hmm, how am I going to do this? It's all trial and error. I got it. Okay. File. My other side. Where's my side file on? There we go. You've got numerous different uh, files on here. This one I like because it's got you can file right on the edge, and it gives you a nice crisp line if you're careful enough. Come on. What's up? As you can hear, my WhatsApp is going crazy. Try and get this video up on Saturday, but uh, obviously I've been doing so much on this. But uh, we will just have to see. Might be Sunday when I post. I know what you're thinking. Stuff the detail. We just want to see it go on the pond. No, that's not the point. It has to look like the thing it's supposed to be. 
No one's ever going to see the winding handle. They might. <laughs> what you want is, when you're at the pond, for other modellers not to just laugh the pants off at you. Because you've probably been around YouTube, you've seen other modelling channels. These guys that weather, put weathering effects on the tanks and the boats and stuff. And uh, it is absolutely stunning what they do. But it's just something that I often start. I'll start to weather something and then never get to the end of it. I'd much rather do little mods like this. Because I don't believe anyone's got a, a kit out on the market where you can replace all the easily broken plastic bits with, bra with brass. I mean, the cut kit does come with a lot of brass brass parts, but they all seem to be decking, like flat plates and things like that. And to be honest, the Itali Italieri one to thirty five, yeah, there's loads of builds of it on on YouTube, but it's not the biggest seller in the world, so. For a company that makes aftermarket parts, you've got to have, it's got to be worthwhile for them to manufacture them in sufficient numbers to make people be able to afford them. I mean, I did see a aftermarket deck gun for the 135 S100, all in brass. And it was like 60 euros. <laughs> Holy moly. For something you're just going to paint up to make it could well as be plastic. But there is the point that they are easily broken if, you if you're converting them to RC and taking them to the pond on a weekend. So, yeah, I'm guessing that that's worth it. But it's still a lot of money. And this is meant to be a hobby, not something that's uh, supposed to bankrupt you. I can hear some of you Americans going, oh, but gee, if 68 euros is going to bankrupt you, man, get a new job. <laughs> Funny you should say that. I've got a new job. Um, quite nervous, actually. I start a new job on uh, Tuesday coming. Let's see how it goes. To be honest, it really does seem too good to be true. Gorgeous luxury hotel middle of york beautiful old building um yeah so let's see how that goes that my friends i don't think you see it but that's gonna do that's a bit of filed solder now all i've got to do is make the holes in this so that'll go through there and then make another one exactly the same for the other side. So, where did I put my... Okay, guys, you've been watching. Where did I put my other needle needle drill? Uh, aha. The right size? No, it's the wrong size. This one. Thanks for your help, chaps. I would never have found it without you. I don't know if that's in camera. And get that in there. I probably need to drill it from the other side as well. And I might even need to drill it a bit bigger because I'm going in at an angle. Let's get a smaller needle file. A needle drill, sorry. Smaller needle drill. I think of a match. Have you? Come on. If you come. There we go. Can I get you in there? I can indeed. To go that side as well. Okay, same again.
I mean, I might need to go at this with a bigger drill, to be honest, because I'm get, having to go at it at an angle. I might go to fit this. <laughs> it's probably going to be too tight, but we shall see. So. Get you in. Jiggery pokery. And as they say, my friends, that is a tickety boo. I've just got to make another one for the other side. Woo! So that's enough brass work for today. Bold with that. Let's do a little bit of weathering. Now, I don't know if you can see this. This is unfinished. Um, when you're weathering, it's entirely up to you what kind of effect you try and go for. Here, I've tried to go for a little bit of rust, a little bit of rust, some wooden boards. It's, none of it's finished. I've still got to put some washes on. By wash, I mean some watered down paint just to blend it in. And then to cover up any where it's a bit too harsh, I'll water down some, really water down some uh, of the Schnell boot white that I've used on this and uh, spray it on just to blend in the bits where it's been a bit harsh on the edges. If you haven't got a spray gun, don't worry about it. When you're weathering, you can you can put your, your thin paints on and just wipe it off with a rag. If you fasten it, if you get the timing right, it'll work perfectly. So... There you go. That's that. I've done a little bit of weathering on it. I mean, the rusting's a little bit too harsh on the back. I'll just give that a light dusting with the uh, spray gun, and uh, that'll take the harshness out of it and make it look a bit more like rust. Um, lessons learned from when I built the V2C submarine, uh, which we will be doing a deep delve on at some point um, because the brass work inside is, is pretty good, to be honest. It, it looks very steampunk, the way I've done the rudder control and the prop shafts. Um, but not today, because it takes ages to take it apart and get inside. So that's the kind of thing we'll be doing now. And it's going to be on uh, this. This is the central portion of the deck. Uh, underneath you'd have the crew quarters uh, and such like. We've still got the masking tape on the portholes on the top, which are underlit by LEDs, which I've fitted. It's going to look so cool when it's lit up. So I get my I start with my flat black, a little bit flat back, as he hopes and prays that it hasn't solidified, and it hasn't. So what I need to do is get my mixy bit that I made plugged in wherever it has gone. Hopefully you guys aren't like me when you start doing something and your your workbench just gets covered in bits and bits as you keep on doing something. So that's the uh, paint mixer that I made. <laughs> just a bit of metal. So there we go. Let's get you in there and get you mixed. Okay, sometimes when I do this, uh, it ends in disaster because the paint goes everywhere. So I start off with it in there. be mixed up enough for me to do some weathering with. Um, I need someone to wipe that off. Right jacket will do. Oh good man, he's broken it. <laughs> okay, that's that off. We need some thinners. So let's bring you back. Get the smallest brush I possess. Tinsy tiny brush. Something to put the paint in. Or 
some and thinners. Get this all nice and mixed up in the thinners. I've made enough here to do the whole boat, to be honest. But whatever I don't use is going straight back in the paint pot. So as you can see, that's the kind of amount it puts on. And that's all you want. Any mistakes can be covered up easily by the spray gun with a, another quick going over with the S100 white. So what I hope to do is there's a hair there. I don't know how my hair got there, but anyway. That's not a hair. That's where I cut the uh right, I don't know if you can see that, but that's going around nicely there. Let's get a little bit of rag. All I'm doing here is adding highlighting around the parts that I want highlighting. As you can see, I've muffed that a bit with my finger, but when we go over this with the spray gun, that will disappear because I'll be putting a very thin coat. Depending on how close up the camera is, and I can't tell right now, there's tiny cut marks where I... put the masking tape on from when we first did the initial coat of spray paint so those will have to be filed out mind you I can, I can only see those with my magnification on these these glasses I'm using at full magnification so I doubt you're going to be able to see it on the camera but I can certainly see it so that's all we're doing, just adding a little bit of highlighting around there. It looks a bit harsh right now, but as I mentioned before, when we get the spray gun on it to melt in these lines, be absolutely fine. So that's all I'm doing. Getting these lines on to highlight the portholes. And also around whatever this gizmo is.
We've tidied up the uh, spray work a little bit around the portholes on the top. Given it a bit of weathering around the gun stanchion. Uh, I think that's where the uh, uh, flat gun goes, if I remember rightly. So I've tidied all that up with the spray gun as well, all around there. I've got some handles to fit. Um, I've got a little bit more spray work to do tomorrow, but my finger's killing me from all that double action work on the spray gun. <laughs> so also on the armoured cupola, we've uh, weathered in the supports for the glass at the top. And done a look, made a start on the woodwork around the side. I'm going to be doing some more of that on Sunday, so uh, stay with us. And let me shift these out of the way so that you can see what else we've been up to today. Jug the water out of the way. And here's where we got to with the deck. So we've adjusted all of the stanchions in the corner one there. Get you in focus. There we go. A heap of work has gone into this so all of the railings are done now. All I have to do is get some chains for the middle ones and attach the ropes for that. Do the weathering on the deck and then we will be, what's the word again? A chickety boo. This sits together. That's where the mid section, section lies on the uh, boat itself. Tell me, this thing is just something to behold. Absolutely huge, 1.2 meters long in total for the whole whole ship as well. But I think that'll do it for today. Um, I'll try and make another video on Sunday, like I said. Um, but for now, uh, like, subscribe, continue to follow this absolutely, I mean, stunning S100 build. And for the uninitiated, yes, it does have three motors. And they're all working now, so we're cooking on gas. Anyway, till Sunday.